Every class of car has one particular model that is top of the pile. The Volkswagen Golf, the Mercedes-Benz S-Class, the Ferrari 458. These are the cars against which all the competition is measured. And when it comes to the luxury SUV, the best of the best, the top of the range, is the Range Rover. Ever since the Range Rover was first seen on the road in 1975, it's been the benchmark. Any SUV since, with any sort of luxury pretense, has been measured against the heritage, the capability and the comfort of one of the UK's ultimate brands. And while some may match or even beat the Range Rover in one or other area, none has matched it for the full package that it offers. The thing about a Range Rover is before you've opened the door, before you've even driven a meter, you know it's something special because it just oozes superiority. This is a huge car, but it has elegance in every line and a design that tells you exactly what it's about. I first saw this car at last year's Paris Motor Show and I quite literally hated it. Comparing it to the previous generation, I thought it had lost some of its presence, that it was no longer an iconic shape, just something that looked like a very big station wagon. But having not seen it for about six months and then being presented with it in its silver and black glory, I have certainly changed my mind. The profile is definitely more generic, but it's also sleeker, giving you an impression that there's more enjoyment to be had in the drive. The redesign is comprehensive. Park an older generation Ranger next to this one, and it looks boxy and even a little clumsy. If the outside is a redesign, then the inside is a whole new world. It seems that Land Rover have declared war on buttons and vowed to eradicate as many of the things as possible. So what you're left with are only the essentials and everything else is operated via the touchscreen interface. As for the finishes, well, this is a Range Rover. That means that you not only get everything, it means everything is finished in top-class materials and luxury is never more than a finger's length away. Or in the case of a cabin this size, an arm's length. Piano black surfaces are matched to cream finishes and black leather seats. The ambient lighting color is adjustable, and rather than being cheesy, it just changes the mood of the cabin from five-star hotel lobby to ultra-modern lounge to super cool hangout. Sadly though, the Range Rover is served with a slice of cheese. When you unlock the car at night, this is what you see on the ground. There are a lot of words to describe a Range Rover. It is luxurious, it is exclusive, it is expensive. This SDV8 costs just under one and a half million rand. But there is one particular word that I like to use and that is effortless. Everything this car does, it does without fuss and without complaint. It just delivers. Even when you want to go off-road, which no Range Rover owner in South Africa is likely to do, the car introduces you to its prowess with a simple touch and a few turns of the terrain response controller. And when you are off-road, this very large, very comfortable, very unlikely candidate for a top 4x4 will crawl and climb its way over anything you put in its way. Its maximum ride height is just under 30 centimeters, and it has a wading depth of just under a meter. So while the car doesn't mind getting dirty, its owners probably do. And I don't think I'm alone in saying that the majority of Range Rovers the world over will spend most of their lives on tar. Now you'd think that a car weighing 2.3 tons with a V8 motor would have some fuel consumption issues, but this is the world's first SUV with an aluminium chassis, and this car is a massive 350 kilograms lighter than the previous model. And the fuel consumption is bordering on astonishing. By way of comparison, we had a Land Rover Discovery 4 V6 diesel long-term test car, and that averaged about 12.5 litres per 100 k's. This bigger, more powerful Range Rover, with its 250 kilowatt, 700 newton metre 4.4 V8 diesel and 8-speed automatic gearbox, hasn't gone over the 12-litre mark since we've had it, and has averaged around 11.3. So it's pretty, it's comfortable, it's capable, it's technologically advanced, and it is a great drive. It doesn't even mind tight spaces. It'll negotiate a shopping mall parking lot as easily as it does a jungle river crossing. But it's not perfect, and it has some very worrying build issues, especially for a car at this end of the market.
Every time that clever digital rev counter swings past the 1500 RPM mark, there is a very noticeable and quite irritating resonance from the engine bay. Sure, you can drown it out with a super powerful Meridian sound system, but the fact remains a car like this shouldn't be making those kinds of noises. And then there's the fabric cover for the panoramic roof, which retracts almost all the way before folding over on itself and leaving a saggy bit of material resting on your passengers' heads. We are not amused. After initially not liking the new Range Rover, having spent some time with it, I've come away impressed. The interior redesign and the surprising fuel consumption add the car's sheer breadth of capability as the top reasons why it is so good. It's just a pity that it's let down by some very obvious build faults. The powerful V8 turbo diesel and smooth 8-speed automatic combine with the aluminium chassis to deliver a very refined drive and impressive fuel consumption. The Range Rover is still undoubtedly the king of SUVs. It's more capable and comfortable than ever, but sadly, the magnificent beast is let down by some very obvious build problems.